All right, this is a live recording um, of the Manitou 2011 girls game versus Great River. We're going to be focusing on Manitou, specifically Alyssa, and see if we can help her find some ways to improve as a player. Um, maybe understand her role better, see some things that she could improve on, and then of course find things that she does well and that she should continue to do. Okay, now we're looking at a build out. They try to move the ball to the left. The field looks pretty crunched right now, which means you have to move the ball quick. Um, spacing seems very tight in between the players, making it hard to pass, as you can see. Okay, she controls the ball, she passes it back. Alyssa's trying to get open, she gets open, and she gets in the middle of three players and tries to make a pass. Okay. So, that's a bold choice because I am a fan of coming into the po into these pockets here. Now, the pocket is so small, and when I say that, I'll show you what I mean. When I say like a pocket, I'm talking about like the triangle in between three players, right? There's times where I want people to come into the middle because when that happens, you'll see players will come in. Now this pocket's really small, right? So I wouldn't recommend doing that in that situation. What I would recommend doing is scanning the field looking for the space, right? That's the first thing that's going to help you out, Alyssa. Um, seeing how we can play players in behind, right? Like no one's really marking Kenzie right here, but to play her you would have to play it through this gap, which would be behind. So really what I'd recommend is getting Molly involved here. So let's play the video and see if you dribble this way, right? I want you to think about how you can gain the attention of this player right here. Oops, that's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to make a circle. Okay, this player. Okay, you want to make this player step to you, right, which frees up Molly, and then you could play this easy ball for her to run on to here, right? You've got Mackenzie and Molly. All of a sudden, you've successfully switched the field and created an easy attack. So I'll show you one more time. Okay, so here, when that ball comes to you, what I like to do is kind of create this circular motion. Instead of going in there, I would have recommended scanning Molly, the space, and Mackenzie, right? And then we're trying to create what's called an overload or more of our Manitou players than the players on Great River. Okay, so instead of dribbling into this area that has four girls, right, like that, I would recommend scanning. So let's see. I'll show you that you didn't scan first, and then I'll show you how to scan, right? Or when to scan, excuse me. So watch your head. Watch. You're watching the ball, you're watching the ball, you're watching the ball. Okay, and then now you're looking at Mackenzie and trying to play that ball, all right? So I would have scanned there. I would have scanned again there, which would have told me now I don't want to go into this space. And I want to run in this motion. It's kind of like a circular motion because you don't want to go right at that person. You want to kind of run across the field like this. And I really like players that can dribble across.
across the field, right? Not not forward through, you know, four players, right? That's brilliant if you can. Um, it's just very difficult because there's so many people in such a tight space. So running fast into space like that, right? Getting this person to start looking at you, and all of a sudden you can play that ball through here to either McKenzie or Molly. Right, normally McKenzie would be marked tighter by a defender, but they didn't hit. Okay, so that's my first learning thing, and that's done by scanning probably three or four times. Scan. When I say scan, I mean look at the whole field. Like, look at here. What are you scanning for? Okay, you're scanning for opportunities to play in teammates or to find a shot. Right? Notice you're watching the ball. I would scan again right here, right? So I'd turn my head and I'd kind of do a scan like the first scan. I would go maybe at goal like that, right? And notice that there's a lot of pressure here, right? And then I'd scan again and I'd probably scan more this way, right? And be like, oh, look at all this space right over here, right? I'm going to take the ball, right, and try to 2v1, and when I say 2v1, me, I want to work me and Molly versus this player, right? No one else is really important. I want to help recognize the space and then 2v1 Molly against this player. So... I'll explain that a little bit more in detail here, um, how to do that. Okay, so as you get the ball, no one's really important except for who you're trying to 2v1 or 3v2. But we're going to start with 2v1. Okay, so when you're dribbling, if you can recognize, here is a 1v1 markup, Alyssa. You see that? If I can dribble here this player doesn't matter right and get her attention these are her eyes and her vision focusing on you right then you've successfully 2v1 two Manitou players versus one player here because she's no longer paying attention to Molly which means Molly can easily slide in to here, right? And you can play that ball in behind here. There'll be a lot of opportunities that I can point out to 2v1 players. Okay. All right. That's my first example I'd like to give to you. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about team. All right. Everyone's running at Molly here. Okay, so I would like her to pass the ball back here quickly, right? And then maybe working through the midfield here, right? And playing that switch in here. But instead we ran, and now I'll take a look at the numbers, okay? So, in this area, look at that. Great River is most likely going to be successful because in this area of the field, there are one, two Manitou players versus three Great River. Let's see if she comes away with it. Nope. Okay. Now... That's great. Great job. Okay, not a great pass, but I want to talk about what you did well here. So what I really like what you do, Alyssa, is you find open space, right? You sit in these pockets, which mean that you're free. And when I say a pocket, right, you're sitting in the middle of these three players, right? Away from a teammate. You do a great job at that. Okay, now... You're kind of, um, kind of, 
kind of communicating. Here, let's see if you communicate. So the, right there, you used your hand and you're kind of asking for that ball. Maybe before. Again, let's take a look at what you're going to do with the ball. Right, I like that you're offering an option, but let, let's start working on making plans with the ball. Right, because you've got three players around you. So like, what can we do from that? Let's say that you get the ball there in the pocket. Right, what's naturally going to happen is this player is going to come in at you, this player is going to come in at you, and this player, based on what I'm seeing with this team. Maybe even this. So they're all going to close in on you. Okay, so what are you going to do here? personally and as a team so what I recommend as a team is starting to get overlaps here and getting our wing backs involved right so you get the ball there you see that Molly is naturally there so that's when I would probably do this personally this is what I would do as a player Right, I'm going to try to delay as much time with my foot skills, right? Because she's not quite in that position, right? Because remember what we talked about? We want to 2v1. We want to get two players. There's Molly and you, Alyssa, versus one player right here. So if you could maybe hold the ball. Now the easiest way is just to hold the ball and then they're going to come in, right? And you're going to try to get into this space and then slot the ball through here for her to run here. If you want to be a little bit more creative, what I like to do is I know I want to play. I know I've already scanned here. I've scanned here, right? In the space. That's when I start being a little unpredictable, right? I pretend like I'm going to go maybe this way. But I gotta communicate with Molly and be like, Molly, run. Molly, make the make the overlap. Molly, get in um, get in behind. Some sort of communication like this. Right? This is the leadership aspect, Alyssa, that you gotta work on. Right? Okay. So you get the ball, maybe you turn this way, right? Because this player's not really guarding you, right? She will. But it'll give you a little bit more time. And then you turn this way. Giving her more time. And all of a sudden, you're not even facing her. You're actually facing Mackenzie now. Right? And then you turn all the way. And then with the right foot, you play her in to this space here to get her in behind. Okay? Now, now that you've done that. So that's what we got to work on. Playing Molly into these spaces. Okay, when Molly gets into these spaces, where is the 3v2? Okay, and I'll show you. So once you play it in behind, Molly will be here with the ball. Okay, now Mackenzie's got to run in here, right? And you'll be here. So because you played that ball, you have what is a 3 because you've picked off this player here, right? You've played the ball behind her and you've gotten Molly in. So Molly's right here. You're right here, Alyssa, and Mackenzie's here. So you have created a 3v2 on goal. Okay? So that means this player is gonna step to Molly. Okay. This player might follow Mackenzie or you, right? But then I would like to see Mackenzie come across, checking for that ball. And let's say that player marks Mackenzie. Now no one is marking you. So Molly should play it to Mackenzie, right? And then, like Tay showed you, right? Far post comes near, and then you're coming far post, okay? And you should be able to score because the ball will be right here. This player will check to Molly because you played her in. This player will see Mackenzie coming into the middle. Right? 
Molly can play it to McKenzie back here, and then all of a sudden you're wide open back post. Unmarked for a shot and a goal. But it all starts with figuring out how to two v one players. Okay, we'll continue now. Okay, the biggest thing is let's watch your scanning. All right. Scanning by everyone. Everyone at this age group is currently a player pretty much just watching the ball. I'm showing your head right here. Watching the ball. Okay? What you should be doing is taking these snapshots here. Right? Because what if the ball bounces here, Alyssa? You're going to have two people on you in an instant. Now you have to be able to make a choice in less than a second. Is your and you have fantastic technical abilities, which is such a great tool to have, right? But if you hold that ball, you're gonna have two, three, four people all around you when you could have taken maybe two touches, one to set up and one to quickly play the outlet. And at this age group, after you play that outlet, if you can make a run the second that you play the ball, they will not follow, okay? And then you'll be on what's called a counterattack and breaking free. Okay, so here's that example. So because you didn't scan before, right? Now you two are running in the same place, right? And you weren't able to play it her because you dribbled and now you're starting to look and by the time that you um, looked here it's too late and you had you know pressure two players on you right okay so bam that could have been a one touch if you already recognized Lauren it could have been two touches um, but one two three too many touches right under too much uh, you know pressure leads to turnover right no problem there but just a suggestion okay also you'll notice which way is 74 running 74 is running here so if you play that ball into Lauren that's when you do that give and go because when you see players running this way, Alyssa. This way. That means it's hard for them to go this way. And which way were you were which way were you running? You were running this way. Right? And she was running this way. So that's when you do a simple give and you make that run in behind and she's you picked her off the out of the game for that moment. And that's a word I use a lot. Picking a player off, right? Picking a player off means just getting the ball here, right? And getting in front of her. Now she's behind you and the ball. She's been picked out of the play. She's no longer a defensive threat. You're moving forward. You're in a great position. Okay, so another example of scanning there. Okay, here's a build out. We weren't able to control that. Now look at it. We had 4v1 right here against McKenzie. All right, so the best choice would have been to go back here move through the midfield and then switch fields because notice like when you see so many players right in one space that means there's big gaps that we can exploit 
right? If McKenzie could have went back here, Kyler could have moved into this this space right here, right? All of a sudden, you're going to be attacking in this side of the field. Very few numbers. If we can get more of our numbers against fewer of their numbers, it's more likely we're going to score. Okay, this is where, again, freeze. Let's watch your head. Here's you, Alyssa. Scan. You'll see all this space. When you see this space right here, you can communicate with Molly to get into this space, right? You could commute, communicate with a forward to run underlap or overlap into that space okay but we gotta see it before that's what I want you to take away from this first lesson I want you to see it before okay you receive the ball right which way are you facing right you're only looking at here you're seeing literally you know one fiftieth of the field right now Right? I want you to scan a few times before you receive the ball. Okay, right now nothing's going on. Right? Here's where you make that plan. Okay? You scan. You could be like, hey, Lord, move into this space. Right? You could be like, hey, Molly, get up the field. Right? Into this space. You could recognize this player because when you receive it let's watch who who's going to cover you most likely it's going to be this player okay you get the ball okay these two players are covering you here but if you could have taken that first touch here and started running as fast as you can using that great speed of you right this player would these two would give up on you. They wouldn't even try to defend you. You'd be running into this space, and you could run with your speed. So I would have used an outside right cut, started running this way, and see if you can burst through these two players without this gap, without them catching you, right? If you can use your speed and burst through this gap, look at what will happen, right? Then this player will start to step to you, and all of a sudden you have a 2v1 with McKenzie, through ball in, she scores, you pass it to her, she passes back for a give and go, right, you score, a lot of things open up. But it all starts with recognizing that space. Also Molly can get in here, a lot of options open up. <coughs> I'm going to maybe do one more clip for you, see what we find. Okay, that, that's wonderful that you were able to take on three players, right, and, sl and slot that ball in. Okay, let's see. So, Mackenzie here needs to cut in front of her player. That first touch... So this is learning for you when you become on the way. That first touch always needs to be in front. You need this player right here to be behind you, right? Because she allowed this player to come to the side of her, she lost an awesome opportunity, right? So right there, we have this opportunity for a cross right here. Lauren's off sides, but that's scanning as well. And that's where you can freeze because you're not necessarily going to be able to, you know, get all the way there. That's where your vision and leadership needs to come in, Alyssa, right? You can, you can say things like, Mackenzie, cut in, right? By her cutting in, that draws the attention of this player, right? All of a sudden, Lauren can sneak into there. We can play in here, right? 
Um, she's off sides right now, but thinking of staying on sides, first touch comes here. She needs to be on side. She could play that ball right across into that space, but that that's what you want to do as a, a winger. Cut inside. You've got to get in front of your player, right? You can't let, allow them to catch up to you. Right, so you burst through that that pot into that pocket. Okay. Let's take a look at this corner. I really like your focus and your agility and your movement in the box, right? Now this is just something that you can work on personally. Like watch, you're about to get the ball. And I can't remember if this is your first year being able to use headers, but some of the greatest players, especially women's soccer, score a lot of goals off headers. Okay, so... Um, we should check to see if we should be working on headers, but if so, right, can you put your head on the ball right now? Are you comfortable with that? If not, we have to slow down the crosses, right? Maybe start with throwing it and work in those headers, okay? So that you can feel comfortable putting your head on the ball off of Kenzie's cross. But your volleys... Right, I've seen you score volleys that way. Right, you're a very dangerous player that can score a lot of goals in the box. There. Okay, that's going to be the end of this short lesson here. The biggest thing that we take take away from this is the ability to scan and recognize numbers okay right here there is really no 2v1 happening right Mackenzie's covered here yes you could slot the ball in and she could play it in but because this is a dangerous area totally support you taking that shot great skill Right, your foot skills to be able to find that shot are fantastic. Technically, when you shoot this ball, adding a little bit of knee snap and landing on that shooting foot through the ball. So, okay, right there, you should bring your leg back a little bit further to get more power. Okay, now this leg should come farther back, right? That'll generate more power. Now the next part is, look at where you land. You land very close to the ball, okay? To get power, you need to get your momentum forward through that ball, which means you landed here. I would want you to land all the way up here. It's like you're jumping through the ball, and that's how you generate that power right there. Okay, bam, right, you hit it, right, that foot that I'm pointing to should end about a foot, maybe even a foot and a half, two feet in front of the ball, but yours landed right where the ball was, right, and you weren't able to generate more power on that shot. Work on those shots, having your momentum go through the ball like you're jumping forward, when you hit it here with your right foot, your right foot should land you should land on your right foot all the way over here. I'll be dramatic, right? You kick the ball here, right, with your right foot, and your right foot lands all the way here right after that shot. That's a little far, but, like, you went shot here, planting foot, land on that planting foot here. Hop forward, generates power. Okay, great job. Um, I can continue this. 
in another video, but your your whole lesson from this is scanning. So when I watch your next video, can you scan Kenzie here, right? Can you scan Lauren here, right? Before the ball, you have it scanned, you have it scanned, right? Can you scan Kenzie, right? Can you scan behind you, right? I want to see your head, we say head on a swivel. I want to see your head on a swivel so that you're no longer just watching the ball. See that? You're looking for opportunities at all times. Every couple seconds, scan here. Scan here, right? Scan here, right? Scan here, over and over and over. Okay? I think that will help you become a better player. Um, next video, I'm going to watch your scans and then look for you to figure out ways to attack people in a 2v1 manner, which, what does that mean? That means if you're dribbling, you're not dribbling at this person, right? You're focused on how can you dribble at this person because now you've created a 2v1 with Molly or dribbling at this person where you've created a 2v1 with Lauren or dribbling at this defender, right, where you've created a 2v1 with Kenzie. 2v1s are hard to mark, so you're more likely to be able to get past them working together than individually by yourself. You're doing a lot of great things. Keep it up. Let me know if this was helpful and if you have any questions.